Hi, my name is Ko and I'm with the Institute of Electronics at Graz University of Technology. Today I want to talk about EMC aware PCB design. In a previous video I have shown you the importance of the current return path. Today I have brought a DC-DC converter with me to give you some further tips on how to improve your next PCB. As usual, I want to start off by explaining the test measurement setup for today. First, here, this green PCB is our DC-DC converter. And its output here is connected to our load. And this load here is just an ohmic resistor with a resistance of about 25 ohms. So let's have a look for it, if I remember right. Yes, about 25 ohms. And the input of our DC-DC converter is here connected to this strange block here. So this block here is called a Line Impedance Stabilization Network, or short LISN, or, or short LISN. <laughs> and this block has now three main purposes. So first, it provides a standardized impedance um, for our test PCB here. Second, it will suppress eventual disturbances which comes from our source, so from this side here. Our source for today is a lead acid battery. And third, it will couple out eventual disturbances here by this port um, and we will feed those disturbances now to our spectrum analyzer. In between here, this block here is a 10 dB attenuator, so don't get confused by this block here. On the top of our spectrum analyzer, we have an additional um, arbitrary waveform generator, but we will use this device later on. Okay, so let's start our first measurement. So on the screen of our spectrum analyzer, we will see um, a measurement when a no voltage is applied here. And now let's apply a voltage. And first you will see here on the spectrum analyzer, so um, we have a resolution bandwidth set with 9 kilohertz, therefore it, it will take some time. But beforehand, um, let's check out the voltages of our circuitry. So first, the voltage, the input voltage of our DC-DC converter. So this is about 12 vo volts. So this metal plane here um, um, is like um, the chassis of, our, of a car, for example. So this is a low ohmic contact, the metal plate here. And the output voltage is about 25 volt, volts. So it's a step up converter or a boost converter. And in a video you can't see it, but the resistor are heating up. So um, it's warm, warm here. And now let's have a close look on a spectrum analyzer. So let's zoom a little bit in. Now on the spectrum analyzer, you can see here on the x-axis, I have plotted the frequencies. So you're starting here at 150 kilohertz and measure up to 108 megahertz. And on the y-axis, we are measuring the voltage in dB microvolt. So it's a logarithmic scale on both x and y-axis. And we can see here the disturbances which comes out from our line impedance stabilization network. And let's save the result here with the blue plot. So now we have saved it on the blue plot here. And now let's exchange the circuitry with our second PCB here. And 
And now on the spectrum analyzer, so the blue plot was the result from the previous PCB, and now the yellow plot is the new result from this PCB here. And we can see uh, um, that the yellow um, plot shows less disturbances compared to the blue plot. So why there is a difference between the yellow and the blue line here? And the answer is quite simple. The blue line corresponds to the previous circuitry, which only shows a single ground line here on the PCB. Instead, the yellow plot here, which repre is representing this circuitry here, um, this circuit here contains a full ground plane here, so a bigger ground plane compared to the previous circuitry. Which brings me to my first PCB recommendation that you should use a solid ground plane if possible. Okay, now let's talk about filters. When using filters, it is important to understand which kind of disturbances we want to filter out. So we have to distinguish two types of emissions. Differential mode emissions, which is in principle some currents which flows in loops and therefore a magnetic flux will occur accordingly to the flow of current. And second, common mode emissions, which are really nasty. So for instance that here the that some common mode currents can flow, uh, so in common mode, and then couple capacity flow here to our ground plane and then flows back to our source. And um, let me now give you a further impression of our test PCB here. So this is our test PCB, and here this is our input port. And those two connections here on the top is the output port. And this here um, is our boost converter, which contains here its um, energy storage element. So this is an inductor here. And this is another recommendation here that you can use some shielded inductors here which have improved characteristics in terms of EMC. And here you can see an input filter and here an output filter. And here the input filter is here another shielded inductance in series and an SMD capacitor here parallel to our input port. So um, this is some kind of low pass filter in an L structure here. So high frequency signals sees a high impedance here for the inductance, but a low impedance here at the capacitance, and therefore high um, high frequency signals can f um, will be suppressed, so they won't go through this filter structure here. And here on the top we have an output filter. So here this block with the naming two two two, and this is a common mode choke. So this device here is used to suppress common mode emissions. And the reason why we are placing here the common mode choke on the top is, and so on the output port, there is less current flowing. And therefore, it's easier to design a common mode choke for the, the output port. And it's more economical here. And right now, both filters are jumpered. So they have no effect right now. But we will now remove those jumpers. So here, by removing this jumper, the inductance will now suppress the high frequency currents. And here, by setting the jumper correctly, the capacitor will um, now also act to suppress high frequency currents. So let's make the yellow line to our blue line. And now let's um, play, activate our filter circuitry. Okay, and 
now we have activated our filter and we can see those filters are doing a really good job so here the yellow plot shows really um, less emissions so probably you might not see it well so i will now remove the blue plot so the blue plot is without filters and the yellow plot now with filters and now let's remove the blue plot here and then as you can see here the yellow plot shows really a good result here now now we have clarified the importance of the layout of our pcb and the importance of the use of filter structures now let's talk about the gate signal i've prepared a third pcb here with a variable resistor here this resistor is connected in front of the gate of our switching transistor by increasing this resistance here we will increase rise and fall time of our switching signal. So I want to show you this here on our multimeter. So now we have a gate resistance of 1 ohms. And now I can increase this gate resistance. So let's make this here up to 50 ohms and by doing this rise and fall times get longer and so now let's replace this PCB by this PCB here okay and now before I will apply the voltage let's zoom a little bit in okay I have now applied the voltage and here in the spectrum analyzer you can see once again this terrible result so we can here see once again our emissions so here no filters are used again and now I will increase the gate resistance but beforehand I will change the resolution bandwidth of our spectrum analyzer because I cannot do this experiment for a long time because um, by increasing the gate resistance we will produce more losses so the, effic the, the efficiency goes down which means that more heat will be produced so let's change our resolution bandwidth here and increase it to 120 kilohertz so that the sweep time just takes 75 milliseconds and now when i'm increasing the resistance the emissions will go down but i will just do it for a short time so now let's increase it and now decrease it once again i will increase the resistance and decrease it once again so you have seen here that especially on the high frequency range we were able to reduce those emissions here now we can further manipulate our gate signal of our dc dc converter by doing this i've brought an arbitrary waveform generator with me and now we will feed the gate signal by this device here so beforehand the gate signal was generated internally by an oscillator but now we are feeding this signal externally and let me show you the signal now on our oscilloscope so in its time domain and first i will apply a simple 300 kilohertz um, rectangular signal with three volts peak peak and then I will activate a frequency modulation of that signal. And then we have achieved the so-called spread spectrum technique. In this way, we are manipulating our switching frequency. So it isn't a constant 300 kilohertz um, gate signal anymore, but changes in time 
with a deviation frequency of 50 kilohertz. So let me now prepare the test measurement setup for our final measurement. Okay, the voltage is now applied and we can see here our known spectrum once again. And if we I will now output our um, 300 kilohertz signal, the spectrum shouldn't change, um, shouldn't change in a big way because the internal oscillator is also producing a 300 kilohertz signal. So let's wait for the sweep here. So I have reduced the resolution bandwidth back to 9 kilohertz. Okay, it's changing a little bit, but not so dramatically. And now let's save that trace here to the blue trace. And now let me activate frequency modulation. So let's activate spread spectrum technique. And now you can see here the blue line is without spread spectrum and the yellow line with spread spectrum. So by using this spread spectrum technique, we are able to decrease the produced emissions. Um, so the peak of the produced emissions, especially at the low and at the middle frequency range. And this is a nice technique for fulfilling some standards because some standards demand to stay below a certain limit line. And um, by using a spread spectrum technique, we are decreasing our amplitude of our emission here to lower values by several decibels. But the trade-off, however, is that we are widening our emission signal here. And this is the reason that at, high, at the high frequency range that spread spectrum um, isn't working in favor for us anymore because the widened spectrum are now all overlapping at a high frequency range and thus leads to it. spread spectrum does not improve our signal at the high frequency range. Now at the end of the video, let me summarize what we've learned today. So first we've discussed some measures, how we can improve our PCB in terms of EMC without any extra costs, which includes um, a correct layout. For instance, by placing a solid ground plane, which was improving our performance, especially in the middle and high frequency range, and by keeping loop areas as small as possible, um, which means that also we should place our connectors as close together as possible, as that would decrease the loop size. Then we've discussed the importance of the usage of filter components. By using an input and output filter, we are able to suppress both differential mode and common mode emissions. Here it is important to know and to understand which filter we would like to use and which um, disturbance we would like to suppress. In our case, with the common mode choke, we are able to suppress especially the common mode emissions at a high frequency range because at high frequencies the impedance of the um, parasitic capacitance goes down. And finally, we've discussed the importance of the gate signal. So first I have just placed a resistor in front of the gate of our switching transistor and then we have seen that we can decrease the emissions at the high frequency range. But be careful here as an increased gate resistance will also decrease the efficiency of the circuitry. And finally, we have seen the impact of a sp spread spectrum technique, which gives us um, lower peak values, especially at the low and the middle frequency range. Okay then, that's it. I hope that you have learned something new and that you can improve your next PCB with the help of the discussed methods today. But anyways, thanks for watching.